Let's start a new run. See if everything works. I... I'm not sure. The wind here will... Nice, thank you. I'm not sure I may be doing a Ghost Babble run as well, just to keep the memorization going. There are two stages where a lot of movement is involved, and I'm not sure if I will memorize all paths correctly. But I think the only way to solve this is by actually playing the game. So just like MG2, I uh, just sat down, start on the game. I should do the same with Ghost Babble, and actually just play through it. Doesn't matter if I'm fast or slow. Just memorize all the ways I need to. Game, there you go. Plus, I should probably make a first submission to the board soon. Just to get it out of my system. <laughs> yeah, I took too long. That's fine, I took too long to get over to him. If you distract a guard, uh, they will eventually turn around on you. That's fine. That one looks like a sky base. Hmm. Okay. I found some very interesting stuff. There's definitely a map system. And the maps are so much bigger in Metal Gear 2. And there's definitely a screen value. So I could probably also make like location-based splits. The problem is for many aspects we usually, you know, don't have a reason to make location-based splits, but that's something else. Here. And remember to just be fast. Need to punch the guard before he leaves the screen. Turn in there. Ah, I was slightly too early. I didn't know that. Probably need to distract one guard here. Yep. Oh, and I'm going down. I'm going up. God damn it. <laughs> I think the alert goes away once I go on. Yeah, it does. Okay. I'm like, oh no. Oh, why am I? God damn it. Go. Oh my god. The first menu is up two times. What am I doing? Um. So yeah, first boss we fight is Black Ninja. A near character. By the way, I never know you can make these nice icons even animated. Um, these are based on splits that every friend did uh, ages ago. And I definitely would like to include some more characters in my split one. It would be nice. Just people know, like, hey, on what parties are you always like on that part? But I have to say, they're probably not that visible right now. Over here. Let me put some bullets in here. That's mean. Oh, I just oh my god, I'm on 1 HP! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> That was a close call! <laughs> oh my god, okay, okay. We are out here. Rip Sheeter? The original Cyber Ninja. Yeah. The one and only. Uh. Alright, let's see if I can get a better uh, Greenberry segment this time. Oh my god, I forgot to crouch. You, you immediately get punished if you don't crouch. Yeah, I know you mentioned that. <laughs> I'm just teasing. But yeah, uh, last time we played, we lost 30 seconds at the green berry. Let's hope we don't do that mistake again. It's gonna be fast here, go here, go down. This guy to go so I can punch him. Hopefully. Oh, he just turned to me. Well, we evaded the uh, alert, so we should probably save a good chunk of time now. And the splits are not based on RTA, they're actually based on the IGT, so I know exactly what's up. And I always have to remember, on this screen, there's one guard I have to punch, or else I will run immediately into him. Gotta remember those small things. Thankfully, MG2, though, is like a very... I'm not saying simple game, it has very complex themes and a very good story. But in terms of speedrunning, gameplay-wise, now have to wait. Definitely on the next screen. Uh, in terms of what you have to do, um, 
there's not much that you need to memorize. Because most of the game is just following the story along. Hey Bracken, how's it going? Long time no see. Hey Bracken, can we get a bass solo cover of this song? About to leave for work, want you to drop by and say good luck. Thanks! Have a nice work day. Mine's just over. <laughs> Maybe. I'm gonna be on the keyboard and just like on a, on a tiny keyboard. <laughs> It's such an annoying part of the game. When I'm developing for the auto splitter, um, for many aspects of the game, I'm just fast forwarding, just so I can test things as they would naturally happen. But I don't need to wait that long, and it can steal a lot of real time from you. <laughs> it's several minutes where you're just standing there, and, like waiting for things to happen, characters to talk. <laughs> Of course, when action speed run, what we do now, fast forwarding is not allowed. Um, I maybe want to suggest soon that we add for emulator runs, then they are allowed. Because for both Metal Gear 1 and Metal Gear 2, um, as soon as the credits roll, nothing changes about the time anymore. MG1 is split between IGT and RTA anyway. RTA is definitely over at the credits. And MG2 also, once the credits start, the IGT is down, so... We could make a reasonable argument to say, if you're an emulator, we can fast forward. Yeah, exactly. The same argument that we have with TTS in the end. Okay. And especially because MG2's credits are, I think, like nine minutes or so. They are really long. Maybe not nine, but I haven't timed it yet. It's, it's definitely a very long credit segment. It doesn't rival MGS4, but that's another thing. <laughs> Gotta be fast here, right? So lose him. But yeah, if we cut the time down to half at least, that will be so much nicer. I'm definitely bringing that forward too. Oh, suspicious. There we go. One more turn and we're done. There we go. Ah, oh my god, I instantly ran into him. Anyway, saved uh, those precious 20 seconds. 30 seconds, actually. I lost a little bit of time at Black Ninja. So that's good. Let's hope we keep the time saved. But I don't need to open this again. Alright, time to find... Running Man, the out-of-breath card from Acid. I wonder if S2 has the same card. I only ever played Acid 1, and I kind of want to speed my new game plus. But I need a few hours to do that, if you can imagine. There we go, there's the fourth. I need uh, at least four hours, probably, if I want to do a speedrun, so that's... I mean, maybe that's a weekend thing, I'm not sure. I have a save file and everything that I need. Would definitely like to do at least one, just for shits and kills. Just like when you two is the final guy waiting. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. Um, I'm thinking I'm stopping most of my development efforts and just clean up the code for this later this weekend. I can still take time to investigate more better story splits, but I'm thinking I'm at a point now where I have all the things I wanted to do. I need to just clean up so the 100% tracker works. Which I need to look into how 100% gets calculated. Because the thing is, of course, after Metal Gear D, we throw everything away again, so there needs to be a point where... <laughs> let's just say, okay, now it's officially 100% run, and after that, we don't care anymore. But there's ways how we can make that work. Like, we can, for example, ignore if you drop items after a certain checkpoint flag. We do have. So we will see. I have a few ideas. And then, yeah, once I'm done with that, I can probably start working on the tutorial. 
place, another gold. And I think the tutorial for this game will be much easier to do because it's just it's just not a difficult game to speedrun. I picked this up basically just watching a big boss guide and then comparing what any percent does different. And uh, so yeah, I mean the wiki is back again, guys. Uh, in case you didn't know, we can work on wiki stuff again. Yay! And so that means I can also update oh God, the wiki pages for any percent. I'm so bad at fending my way here on the swamp. That's why I want to do one run per day so I can memorize everything. <laughs> there you go. Hey, I lost a lot of time with that thing. Not cool. But now we gotta go and pick up the stinger. Yeah, with which we can then fight behind D of this game. Funny enough, there's a helicopter fight in every 2D game. MG1, MG2, and in Ghost Battle. All of these are mandatory, of course. I will also probably soon, uh, like next week, if I want to take a break, I can do a commentary for Metal Gear and its Java port. I played the Java port today. It's so bad, I just did it to fill a slot in the category extension board and I never want to touch it again. But I think it makes at least for some fun, I guess, insight? Because the Java version basically is the blueprint of what the PS2 version later will use. Thankfully, they did so much work for the actual PS2 version. That to say, oh yeah, it's based on a Java port is more like, yeah, they they started with the Java port scraps. <laughs> it is functional, but MG2 Java is just it's a bad experience. Easy is just not fully developed at all. So many aspects are different. But yeah, maybe, maybe next week we're gonna do a little reaction. Because I just recorded the run. Uh, no commentary, anything. I just wanted to be done with it. <laughs> so maybe next week I will actually make a video where I just explain a little bit about the differences for this game. But yeah, today we're playing MG2. I wish we had such a... Like, PC version. For MG2, that will be... Again. Like, imagine we could just take that game and put it on PC instead of it. I hate the aiming section here. It's so easy to miss the first shot, and I'm almost like, God damn it, I gotta try better. Alright, moving on. We're still on minus. Would be nice if we could crack the 50 minute mark. Wait for this guy to turn. Punch, 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 and then get the box. And then we gotta get over here. Hog the kernel. After we do that, we can actually go and go into the box. And go into the second building. As it is. Oh. Get ready always to punch on screen. We have another call we need to take. Right, there we go. And then we have to go down to the basement to meet Holly. It's probably, I'd probably have like a bigger time loss as well, a red blaster. Maybe because I had an uh, alert or something. Hey, Plywood. How are you going? There we go. I kind of want to make like a snake art no purse emote. You know, animated emote, which is like, oh, oh, oh. just specifically for when playing this game. <laughs> it's so funny. If you've never seen the run, uh, you should check out Mini Omega's. Um, Mini Omega King's run at GDQ where I did MG2 and all the audience was just like near <laughs> Hilarious. Alright, let's track. We gotta go up to and we gotta go down to. Up to and down to. And there we go. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> MG2 shaped my head. There we go. So the card 4 pickup determines when we end the holy split, which is a very convenient place because we 
pick up the car to basically in the middle of their conversation. So we're gonna go down here and up. Twice, there we go. And now it's off to get the grenades that we need for Red Blaster. But maybe make it split. If we want. I can make splits based on item pickup and on the weapon pickup. So maybe breaking down the segment will make a reasonable like a reasonable thing. Uh, I kinda wanna make my splits and segments of oh, up. <laughs> I wanna make them like around a minute up to two minutes most. Because then you always have like a like often enough feedback loop if you are doing a good one or not. That's at least my idea. If you know like every two minutes, okay, we're doing good then, that's fine. Here, for example, I needed to wait a moment because I didn't want to have the alert. Probably a plus minus zero game. So if you get the alert, you will stand still for a second. If you wait and stand still and don't get an alert, so I'm like, eh. <laughs> and I should have menu to the grenades here when I went from car two to four. And that's fine. Oh, shit. It's just... <laughs> it down two for the car two to four. Down one to go from the pistol to the grenade. Those are the many, many aspects I will definitely try to include in my tutorials and stuff on the wiki page. Because I still think menuing in MG1 and MG2 is such a vital part to save time as the IGT continues to take and the real time, of course. Right, walk left here, so you immediately punch the elevator as you go up. Need a little trick I found. Just pre align yourself. And there we go, off to the next elevator to fight the Rap Blaster. So these splits are like 12 seconds short of the actual PB that I got in the duology run, but if you keep this time going, I can definitely get a nice PB by a few seconds at least. Again, I would love to get a 50x something this week maybe. And that's why I sit down every day to do at least one run. And there we go. The thing is, there's like many breaks in the game. So while a speedrun of MG2 like lasts for an hour, there's like many segments where you can easily like take a sip of water, relax for a moment, like... It's... Like if you could compress probably the pure gameplay time down to what we just played, probably around half of the game. Oh no, it's Red Blaster! He's on the ceiling! Oh my god, I missed him. Hey, okay. This game's pace isn't brutal. MG1, NES, MSX is more than mine. Oh, for sure. 100%. MG1, MSX at least, I don't know NES. MSX is just pure breakneck speed. Which I love, like, it's 90 minutes of pure execution, right? So my brain goes like, okay, if I do everything right, we're good to go. <laughs> yes, let's go! Let's go, the fucking god pigeon! Haha! <laughs> Let's go! I just walked into the fucking room and it's there! Holy shit! Ah! <laughs> that, that is dope. <laughs> oh my god. You don't see that often. That That is brilliant. <laughs> Amazing. It makes up for the little bit of time loss we had at Red Blaster because Red Blaster wasn't a good fight. <laughs> Alright, it's time to meet Gustava. For that, we have to go back to the earlier elevator and go back to the first building via the underground. So, I, I can't wait to see that split update. That must be a good time save. Yeah, too, too bad I don't. Like, I haven't found any story um, 
update. There might be a checkpoint update, I'm not too sure. Between fighting Red Master and until we beat Dr. Madna. Dr. Madna is basically decided by picking up the level 5 card. That is literally the best there, that's the God Pigeon. I'm not kidding. You just walk in and immediately pick it up, so that's amazing. <laughs> if you can't get that reliable, then holy cow. And I think even Mini's world record 80% run has like at least one screen transition, I think. Something like that. It was a, the thing is it was not just in my room and flying, it was in my room and walking. I could just pick it up. And I was so nervous because it can very quickly just start flying again and then take a few rounds before it goes down again, so you gotta act fast on that. Alright, we got 11 bullets of my pistol, that's not ideal. I wanna have at least 11 later for the hamsters. So, you gotta take a quick breath here, so I don't go too far. And it's time for some elevators. The thing is that the checkpoint system is also based on floors, so every time when you enter an elevator and change floors, the checkpoint also changes, so... It's not like it can be really useful for making splits. Or like a 1 through, whatever, 48 uh, numbering scheme. Because it's also based on the map scenario. Which makes sense, you want to have checkpoints not just based on uh, story points. Nice, got the early punch, no alert, let's go. That timing is very strict, if you just miss by a few seconds, you will be very, very strict. Go, take a walk here. Second door to the right. This menu. So for nice guards, probably not having alerts slow me down. Like even if you're not going for big boss, having alerts every time you get an alert is super slow. Here. Okay, they're all out of my way and the guards are as well, let's go. So it's just getting over there, Gustavus already at the toilets for men, and we just gotta wait for her to walk over, amazing. There we go. Clean segment. I could probably make a split here just based on the screen. There's a definitely um, there's a game state that the game uses to switch back and uh, forth. So like I think I think if you're just in gameplay, the game flag is or game state is 18. If you are in the menu, it's 20 and stuff like that. So the final split of the game, when actually you transition from gameplay to credits, is uh, game flag 25, something like that. Very convenient to have accurate, you know, uh, an accurate point where you know, okay, the IGT is definitely stopping. So we know we can also split for the final time. Alright, time to just go over here. Too bad we cannot crawl into this elevator, we'll have to go the whole distance here. And as soon as we meet Dr. Matt now, we should be able to split, because we get the level life card. Okay. There you go, nice. Yeah, that god pigeon gave me a massive gold now. That's insane. <laughs> Holy cow. Yeah, if I don't mess up too much, that's the sub-51. Easy. I just need to wait for, um... For Jungle Evil. Jungle Evil is mean. He can steal some time from you just by being on the different screen. Because it just pops up randomly. It's 
too bad we know so little about the development of this game. Or else we could maybe find like some insights based on tools and stuff like that. On the camera. All right. Time for a cutscene. Now I just need to wait for Gustavo to die. We actually got two items on this split. It's the level 6 card and the brooch. I'm not sure which one I used to split here. It could be that we double split them. <laughs> it's like one of the few flaws, I guess. You have to definitely make a choice which point you want to split on. And they're basically the exact same time. So, let's see. I'm oh, losing some time here. Probably because I split too early last time. Oh, we don't split at all. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> Maybe the order splitter does actually not split at all. You know, need to activate the setting. Yeah, it looks like it. Okay, we're going to split. This, uh, skip this. Uh, Jesus Christ, I should have held X down. I can't see. Oh my god, I did. I did my own thing wrong. <laughs> so, what I usually do is I walk uh, on the plate so the guard gets distracted. But it's very tricky, like, it's super swaggy to do. You don't want to fail this, and in this instance, I went down probably a few pixels and failed it. Oh, it doesn't matter. As soon as we uh, switch the checkpoint here, boom, no alert anymore. So, whatever. Just gotta get down to the lighter. Now, our next fight is the Four horsemen. It's gonna take a while to get there. So let's see. <clears throat> and now we wait. Green butter returned. Punch. We gotta punch the wall once here for the top guard. So he will be slightly delayed on his round. Or else he will come down a thing just as we bypass him. Alright, level 6 guard. They we're definitely bleeding sometimes. That's fine. And it didn't split on glider pickup. I'm not sure if I have the settings set correctly. So we shall see. It will definitely split on the booch. Uh, easy. Okay, damn it. That's gonna cost me some time because I lost my point in the menu. Menus in MG2 work in stupid ways. Such as that all items are sorted automatically based on the bite, uh, bit that they are located in. In a... 64 integer or long. I don't want to go out too early, I want to go to fourth floor. Yes. <laughs> I was so preoccupied with my own explanation. <laughs> Alright, let's see. And we got. Oh, I have a bundle. Again, wonderful. It's one of those things you can definitely get a good grasp on with just some daily practice. Over here. All right. Four card. Do 
we get another no alert? Let's go, we did it. Okay. What about these? Not good. That would be good for a big boss run. One more. Which I don't do. Yet. I can see myself try it at least. Unlike in MG1 where big boss is really painful. <laughs> Alright, how are we looking for pace? Nice. Yeah, still minus 44, I take it. Underground. This menu is upright. Up. Okay. I think last time I also walked the wrong way, so we should sit here. And now just to start the fight. What was it? I need the mines. Twelve mines in total for the four horsemen and four for Dr. Mana later. This time I'm gonna take it. 100% sure I'm gonna walk alive to immediately, not now. Don't want an alert. If you want to have a, if you get an alert here, it's even more devastating because you will go out, and there will be guards on your way instead of that the guards are in the center elevator. I'm not sure if I did this in the last run. Might have been the case that cost me some time. In any case, let's see first. Didn't get an alert this time, so that's good. One, two, three. This is very close to the wall. One, two, three. One, two, three. All right. Didn't blow up any of these. And here comes Great Fox. There we go. The camp level 7 card makes a split. Very nice. Exactly how we want it. Um, I'm not sure if the height removal will split. I should have checked the settings beforehand. Uh, developing auto splitter and running at the same time is a messy thing. <laughs> Here, I gotta remember down one and up one. Oh, it's actually like this. It's a little executions in between that make um, the 2D games also so interesting. Not Ghost Babble, but I think all the others. Time for a long climb. Wish we could bomb escape that. <laughs> Sadly, it doesn't work like that. Like any one of these screens is a single ID, there's nothing overlapping as far as I found. <clears throat> Would be cool if you could further investigate the actual code of the game. Sadly, there's no. You know, reverse engineering or something like that. We do have a reverse engineered code for MG1, but... We'll do. I 
I mean, it's the early 80s and 90s gaming era. So much different, and even the, you know, Java port in 2005 and 6. Way less being talked about. To be fair though, I would love to see, for example, Code uh, Jima tackle a number of nice 2D game again. Like a small story driven 2D game. I don't know. It doesn't always have to be the bombastic 3D game. I mean, we have only seen one. I should maybe tackle an NTSC run as well soon. It is exactly the same speed run, it's just snake moves slower. So that was good. I did I think one run on Xbox the HD version. I think it's fine. It's definitely a different beast if you want to go for big balls, but just the any percent speed run. Whatever. <laughs> Guess we take that. I'm gonna go for smoke. Actually, let me check if the split point is set. Oh yeah, it's it wasn't checked at all. Hang glider collection and hang glider drop wasn't checked at all in my life split. Okay. But it should split now as soon as the glider leaves my inventory. Which again, that makes um, tracking 100% completion a weird thing. It's like so many items are just, you know, getting dropped from the inventory later again. So a tracker in MG2 definitely needs to count everything the first time. Good luck, but hope the runs go well. Thank you so much, Kami. How are you doing? Welcome, welcome. Let's see. I need the... Seven. There you go. Time for Jungle Evil. He's a meanie. Constantly hiding and running away from me. And, oh yeah, Flying High did actually split. Let's go. Look at meaty PB is coming in, hopefully. That hit him. Oh my god. Get on my weight. Oh, there you go. Okay. That's a good position. It's just opposite of the box, so he doesn't hit me. Too bad you cannot rely on that, really. No. I think one more and we got him. Oh my god. This is what I mean, right? This is what I mean. I gotta go like this so the grenades can hit him. And I, I just missed him. And this is not where he bleeds me time. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. There we go. Okay, okay. Well, we lost uh, eight seconds. Whatever. We're still on a very nice pace, regardless. But I, if Black Ninja goes wrong with the manipulation, you know, if you do a mistake early, if the Pigeon doesn't play all, and if Jungle Evil doesn't go well, those are the big, you know, time losses you can have in the speedrun. Oh my god, I didn't make a hack segment. That's fine, we're gonna unsplit. I gotta remember to make a new segment. Excuse me, sir. There we go. Alright. Alright, just get over here. So, fun fact, in case you never knew. The egg that we just got is uh, for an owl. That just straight up hatches, grown up and everything. And the thing that we need to do is actually get in and have it distract the guards. The guard will think, oh, and there's an owl, probably nighttime. And then he opens the door for us. The good thing is that the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
The good thing is that the egg uh, will immediately start hatching. As soon as you pick it up, the timer goes up. So it doesn't matter if you're fast or if you're slow. Um, as soon as we pick up the egg, we are on a set timer. We cannot accelerate it. That would be another great um, manipulation where we would... I don't know. I think the Danny has explained it to me. That in MSX version, the original MSX2 computer version, you can die and reset the IGT or what it was. And the um, egg timer would actually go up. So let's go here. You can see it's already cracked, so it definitely hatches while it is in my inventory. Unlike the um, brooch, which needs to be uh, taken out of the inventory, or else the brooch wouldn't freeze in the freezer. It's also that if you have the menu open, your ration stone off. So the timer only goes down for the rations if you are walking. Which comes back again to the different game states that the game has. Alright, as soon as the all goes off, I can switch to card 8. Damn, I'm gonna be late. For what? For gate opening? <laughs> There we go. And now we're just gonna get over here and get to the next next boss fight. But before that, we gotta make sure that to not die to this bulldozer thingy. Unlike in MG1, we do not fight them. We just ignore them. I wish we could fight this one. We have to bypass here three times. It would be a massive time save if we could just bypass them. And we just got seen on the last two frames. That's unfortunate. You don't want to have an alert here ready because the guards will come down in the elevator. And they're kind of annoying. The good thing is, I mean, you can just take the elevator down to the next boss fight, start it, and then ignore them. So, like, honestly, it's whatever. As we'll see, I step out and the alert is gone. Which makes sense, we're gonna fight the boss now. Just the delay when the alert comes in, we stand still. Nice. No grenade wasted. And we may back sometime. But that's good. One rush over. Alright, so we have to uh, nullify the acid here and step on it with chocolate. Which, yeah. <laughs> I mean, video games, son. And now we gotta go back and grab the level 9 card because that thing sadly is still at jungle evil. That sly bastard got two cards for one today. So we just have to pan out the game time and go on it. We need it for exactly one door. And this is probably a massive time save. If we can ever find it, the level 9 card scape, that would be massive. We would just to flip a single bit in a very long byte chain. And we have it unlocked, right? Just a single zero turns into a one if we can go through the door directly. No backtracking. As it stands right now, I have no idea how to overflow that value, so... It is what it is. That alert is also only there if you have bad movement, as I do. <laughs> I'm not good at the game yet, but that's why we do daily runs, right? Gotta build up the muscle memory. It's very locked down, it's, it's quite good actually. The only thing we can really hope for is some RNG manipulation, right? So Black Ninja, we have an idea. Jungle Evil would be great. Pigeon, as we've seen. So these broken 2D game, yeah. I mean, even Ghost Bevel, as we found out with the Fogger, is interesting broken. <laughs> I find it fascinating. Something the Fogger does removes the effect of the lasers, so who knows what that is. I should probably just run through and get the alert. It's probably faster. Because on the next stream we can just ignore this, go down immediately, and you know, still be fast. But I don't guess. Oh, 
stuck in the corner. It's definitely worth timing out. Pros and cons, like getting the alert here or waiting. Yeah, player, you may m missed it in the beginning of the stream, but I said I probably, I probably will stop focusing too much on the auto splitter. We have very robust split points that we defined. Nice, I got this alert out of my way. So I will probably start working on tutorials and timings and stuff like that. You're really tightening down and writing everything to the wiki in our knowledge base so we know what is up. Oh, yeah. For the actual more speedrun focus stuff, less all better <laughs> things. I want to especially take a look at 100% just for the memes, right? Uh, right, I want to go down three times a bit. Oh, it was three times, hey! A memory was not. Alright. So hopefully, when we pick up the Oilix, it will split. Hey man, the 5P Red will run this game on MG1, so appreciate it. Hey, the 5P Red did run it after I made it on MG1, appreciate it as well, right? So... Look, if it's only for myself, I can live with it, because at least I have a nice tool that I can use. I, I made a splitter for the duology, I just merged the two together, which is actually some work. Yeah. Interesting enough, it's not that you can just put them together and be done. You actually have to clean up the code a little bit. And uh, you can never know. I still think emulation for MG1 and MG2 is the way to go. And I personally, um, I always get a great feeling out of my runs if I know... Um, Oh no, I'm on a good pace, or if there's a segment I, I don't know. That always is, like, just psychologically nice to know about. So yeah. Uh, Alright, down one. Oh, uh, there's the level 4 card, Jesus Christ. <laughs> it did not split on Oilix acquisition. Probably didn't check it, it's fine. It should split as soon as we go down to the underground. And to be fair, making a splitter for five people is still more than what we have for MGS Mobile. Because <laughs> I was literally the only person using it. So I take that. But we're still minus 43 reaching the endgame here, so I take that. That looks like a very nice PB update. As not much should be going wrong from here on. So hopefully, if everything goes well enough, we get the sub we want today. Four. One. Four. And another one. Two. There we go. This game just needs something to jazz it up. Oh yeah, for sure. It's one of those many cases where it's just overlooked, right? Not many people play it, so not many people see it. There's not that many resources for it, I would believe, as well. So... And there we go. That'll be done. And Grey Fox now. And as soon as we pick up the Oilix again, um, we'll have another checkpoint update. This is basically where we get reset if we die at Big Boss. That demands the end of the Grey Fox, and Big Boss ends as soon as the door opens to the escape. So, here we go. What I found out as well, uh, you can just hold up here and Snake will automatically move to the side. I was always thinking, ah, I gotta go left first, but you can just hold up. Two. And I'm holding down most of the time here because I want to skip the dialogues here as soon as possible. Until I pick up card 3 where I have to crouch, so that's what I have to do. Let go of A. There we go. Nice. 
two. Web card four. Move on to the asset. And then I'll just go left. Ow! There he is. Yeah, big boss manipulation is another thing. Oh my god, I was another <laughs> I gotta go to this door. Yeah, that's an easy time. I could die and reset the IGT, but you know, that's gonna be. I'd rather not. Yes, there we go. Sir, sir, sir. Right, come on down. Not in. Where are you going, Big Boss? Where are you going? Where are you going, sir? Come over here. He's like, I'm looking for you. Where are you? I'm like, I'm right here. Do you see me waving? <laughs> I mean, the task does break the green barret, right? And save like a minute. Big Boss AI is actually the worst. It is. But I forgive him because he does a funny dance when he's on fire. Shouldn't have said that, but I said it. Alright, what was the damage? I'd love to know, but probably can't know. 49. How long is the escape sequence? We'll see. Will we reach the sub 51? That would be sweet. No idea about that. It's definitely a PB, the question is by how much, right? And I did have better big boss fights, to be clear. We lost some time already at Jungle Evil, I don't know how much the time loss was at big boss, but that's why I decided now to stop working on the splitter and just started doing the runs. That's the button, that's unfortunate. And there we go. I don't, yeah, we, we're not getting... We're not getting the sub-50. That's the next big level I don't want to reach. Uh, meeting Mini on the 49. Yeah. I gotta go forward a little bit more. Alright, and just spam bullets. The thing is that the split should be massively better now because we just can't get it. Damn it, I'm out of ammo. And the thing is like 30 seconds more. Between 20 and 30 seconds between the message and then the IGT actually stops. Let's have a look here. Is it a sub 51? We shall see. It's the chopper. Yeah, I'm afraid we will just miss the sub-51. Just barely miss it. Ah, damn it. Okay. <laughs> Still, a PB is a PB. Uh, 51 or 6. Okay, I take it. I take it. That's a 24 second improvement over Thursday's duology one. Wait, the IGT doesn't stop there? Wouldn't you want to stand by where he has to move then? Yeah, probably. Probably. No. True from that position. Yep. You know, you say this, and I'm like, yeah, I should do that. Why have I never done that? I don't know. When I look at this game, my brain is focused on the code, not on speed strats, so I have to transition over to that now. <laughs> but yeah, for the most time, people were thinking, oh yeah, IGT stops because it's the last input we can do. Everything else is just automatic. But turns out the IGT only stops when we actually fade to screen and switch from the gameplay to the credits flag, so gotcha go, thanks. Yeah, it's one of the many aspects we should now actually look into optimizing further into any percent, right? So yeah, we lost 10 seconds between post magna segment and here, which is probably the big boss fact. I mean, all other things are fairly clean. Looking into uh, a Decent enough explanation of what to do at Metal Gear Gear is also interesting. Because you want to start the fight with two grenades and then move up and always throw four. You know, 
change direction and throw four grenades and they go down, throw four grenades and so on. Optimizing that a little bit more should be easy. Yeah. Alright, it's 7 p.m. I might try a ghost battle. I might try. Just to, you know, further deepen the memorization. <laughs> Wait, now we're gonna just enjoy the credits. So you would stand in position and have to holly have holly too, right? Yeah, ideally you wanna manipulate, go up in a circle, go down. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. <laughs> yeah, we, we can definitely squeeze out what is it, like three seconds? Hey, that's time save. But if, if even plywood didn't know that. I'm like, okay, there's there's many things we should still write down, update on our knowledge base, which is good, which is good. Always nice to improve and update our knowledge. And this is why I run on emulator. Because I got knowledge from that. Just that alone. That's why I want to look into ghost babble uh, variables and stuff. Not technically to... I mean, I did so much work already, but it's just for me... Just knowing more things, what happens to him, right? Would be nice to know, shit. <laughs> but yeah, our sum of best is now 4825. Assume nothing, test everything. That is right. We learned that lesson in MG1 when we fought building free, avoiding the pits. PS2 PAL exclusive, exclusive line was really exclusive and we found out no it's actually not because somebody else who never heard about that actually just did it and I'm like oh see this is where the assumption got the better of us but yeah let me see my settings quickly did I enable the oilix pickup I Oh, it didn't. Huh. Not even listed. Oilix, I think, is ID 13. Really not listed. Okay. Eh. Yeah, I, got, I gotta do some cleanup. For sure. Yeah, it's currently not listed at all. That's weird. <laughs> Explains why it couldn't split there. <laughs> yeah, hang glider I fixed because I just didn't have active. It's good. What other split did I skip? Gustavo's dead is the story flag. I probably just gave it a wrong name or something like that. Alright. Here comes the banger soundtrack. So cool. Given that I just just hang up for your control, you want to position staying high. Yep. Oh man. I can't wait to brag about that god pigeon. Holy fuck. I was literally entering the room and I had it. Like you can maybe squeeze out a second more if you were literally right on that pigeon as you enter the room, but that was an insanely good pigeon. I should probably, I should probably, thinking about Splitter Brain, <laughs> I should probably track when we enter the room until we, there, there must be like a story flag for picking up the pigeon, I'm very certain of it. So we enter the room and until we pick up the pigeon, that could be also a very interesting segment to track. Because then even the audience you knows like, oh god, he just entered the room and now it's like on a plus 30 just because of the bad pigeon. 
That's what I mean, like, I wanna, uh, if I make a splitter, I wanna have it so the segments aren't too long. And you can actually easily see what segment cut you from. But here it is, the official confirmation of my new PB. <sighs> Improved by 24 seconds. Nothing odd out of here, of course, the data matches what I have in my auto splitter. Else I would be worried. And uh, yeah, if you're watching this on YouTube, thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked it. Tried to explain a little bit more, and thanks for the GGs and the jams. And um, yeah, I see you all hopefully on my Twitch if you want to see this run being performed live. And I'm out for today. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.